Hey everybody, this is Christian and today's video is a very special one because today I'm not talking about any of my home lab projects or things that I've built in my server rack, no. Today we're taking a look at your home labs because I recently asked you guys on YouTube and social media, hey, can you share some nice pictures, videos or descriptions about anything that you have accomplished in your home lab project? And please post it in one of our new Discord channels that is called Your Home Labs. That's what I'm going to react to today. And maybe we can do this in the style of a recurring community event. So if you have any pictures or things that you want to share with us, then just submit it to our Discord channel and from time to time I'll Take a look at them and maybe make a video to showcase some really cool and inspiring home lab projects that you have accomplished. And it doesn't really matter if that's a big server rack with a bunch of different servers like some of our community members have. No, it can also be a very small home lab. Yeah, I've really seen some nice setups with just one or two small computers and a small eight port network switch because that's also a home lab. Yeah, it doesn't really matter how big it is or how impressive it is. No, it's just about getting started and sharing what you have done and I'm really interested in seeing how you guys have accomplished certain things because you know in IT there is not this one and only way to build a home lab or you need this or that particular setup no there are literally million ways how you can do this and how you can approach running a home lab so without any further uh, discussion let's jump right into it and let's take a look at some of the most impressive and cool home labs I found Okay, so let's start with the first home lab. So this is submitted by Romayo JR and thanks for your submission by the way. I will sh first show you the picture and yeah, this is a very tiny nice home lab. But as you will see later, this is actually much bigger than you might think right now. So as you can see, he got a TrueNet scale machine that looks like a, a self-built NAS system and a three node Proxmox cluster, I suppose. Yeah, you also shared some nice specs about the servers, like the TrueNet server specs are Intel Xeon CPU with 32 gigabytes of ECC memory, a GPU, I suppose that's probably for transcoding uh, movies or yeah, if you are running a Plex server, something like that as a virtual machine or maybe as a Docker container, I don't know if that's possible as well, but I suppose. And you put that in a Silverstone 5-bay chassis. So this is actually pretty nice. It's 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 a small self-built NAS, but you got a lot of great computing power, even a GPU for transcoding. That looks pretty nice. And the free node Proxmox cluster, this, this is built uh, based on three Dell Optiplex 7060. Each, each with an i7 CPU, 32 gigabytes of memory. I think that's the case for each of these nodes. And three terabyte in total shared storage with a Ceph pool. So I haven't really looked at this technology myself, but I think this is a pretty great way to start a home lab if you want to play around with high availability, virtual machines and these kind of things. But you don't want to invest too much money in a big and beefy home lab then this approach is really nice because I know a lot of companies buy these mini computers for their workstation desks and from time to time when they refresh them, they sell them on eBay. And here and there you can find some really great deals on eBay for these used uh, mini computers, either from Dell or from HP. And they are usually very power efficient, so they don't produce much noise, they don't produce much heat. But if you combine three of them together, you got some really decent computing power. Yeah, If we take a look at some of the pictures, all these Proxbox nodes combined have 36 CPU cores and 187 gigabytes of memory, which is absolutely insane. So this is a great approach to get some decent computing power for a fair amount of money. So I myself, I followed a different approach because I didn't build a Proxmox cluster. I really just bought one big server. But I also think about at some day, maybe take a look at Proxmox clustering and put a couple of machines together and then horizontally scale it with adding more nodes to the cluster. And then you got a decent amount of computing power to run many, many virtual machines. And also the TrueNest scale machine looks pretty great, like 30 gigabytes of memory, a lot of space with four disks in combination. I think that is more than enough for most home labs that people would run. And so even when this doesn't look like a big one, you can see when you take a closer look that this is really great and should be sufficient for any workload that you might want to run in a home lab. Okay, next one. This is from Jeremy McFake. <laughs> That's a nice name, yeah. And this looks like a pretty, yeah, also small home lab. Um, you also shared some interesting uh, specs about this. So this is a Fujitsu S Primo, um, 16 gigabytes uh, memory and an Intel i5 
5. This is using Proxmox only with one virtual machine at the moment. And you can definitely think about if you should run Proxmox if you only got one machine. It doesn't really look like it would make much sense. But I would always run Proxmox on a machine like this because you might just run one virtual machine for now, but maybe you want to try out something different. Maybe you want to install a different machine to experiment because this is what we do in a home lab, right? And then I think it makes much more sense to run a Proxmox operating system where you can add more virtual machines, even if you don't utilize that now, you might in the future. And you could even think about, just like we saw before, if you need more computing power, then just buy one or two more of these mini computers and put them in a Proxmox cluster. So that is a great way. But man, I need to complain about this cable management, man. This just looks horrible. So you need to do something about this, right? With that limited space, I don't know what you can do, but man, just, just tidy it up. That looks terrible. So uh, some cable management would be great here. Yeah, this is how most people start. Okay, next one. This one is one D-Drone. So this really looks uh, awesome, yeah? You got some uh, really interesting lighting in here. I, I want to know if that's self-built, if you added the lights yourself, or if that comes with the server rack. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a Micronic router, and this switch here, I don't know, I'm not really sure. But you got some nice cable management in here to tie it up, and I feel like this is much more network focused than computing focused. So you're definitely a networking guy, I suppose. And also, what the hell is that? So here, ah, there is Micronic router board. I'm not really comfortable with Micronic. I haven't really tried any of these machines yet myself. And oh yeah, I absolutely love this. So you have some nice visualization about the networking setup. I would really love to see some descriptions here because I don't know what these devices are and what they do. And I also don't know the, the network. So even if you have some visualizations and some connectivity between these devices, I really don't know. So what is the network? Where is that connected to and what it actually does. So that would be great. But you can see on the right side, there's also some nice computing power. Is, is that a PlayStation? <laughs> and a, a small NAS, that's probably a Tor server from HP. It looks like HP, but so small I can't really see. And some Raspberry Pis. Laptops, telephone. And so this switch seems to be the central networking unit here. And, th and then you also got a different network, maybe for, I don't know, receiver, TV, and another network for camera setups. So that's really nice. And this is the home dashboard. I think that's, is that Heimdall? It, it looks like that, but yeah, again, I'm not sure. But you can see it's, it's, it's a Proxmox server, Portana 1, Portana 2, 3, Synology NAS, uh, some productivity stuff. Uptime Kuma, really love that application. Plex Media Server. So you got a lot of great stuff in here. And yeah, that's really interesting. So you're running a lot of the workloads here on the small Raspberry Pis. And you have a mini PC running Proxmox for testing new apps. I'm, I'm pretty sure you might shut down this Proxmox machine if you don't need that right now. And you got all the stuff that you need 24-7 for your home lab on these small Raspberry Pis just for power efficiency. That's how I would do it. So really makes a lot of sense sense to me. And the networking setup is also interesting. You got a lot of different brands here and there, like Microtic, TP-Link. Really interesting. I would love to play around with these devices at some day, but I really got no idea how they work. But yeah, this is a world where I probably need to learn a bit more about it. But also really nice, great home lab. And yeah, the server rack looks absolutely amazing. Great work, man. Okay, next one uh, from Drella. So probably a lot of you guys seem to run Proxmox clusters these days, right? I mean, this looks like Intel Nux, and they are also very popular for running home labs because just like all mini computers, very power efficient. A lot of computing power if you combine them all three together. And this looks also nice. I mean, what the hell is that here? I think this is like a USB network adapter. I'm not really sure for what this is. I mean, this is connected to the to the back here. I'm not sure what that is about. That seems very interesting. And yeah, on the right side, you also got some uh, another device. Is that a NAS or anything like that? It's really hard to see from these pictures here, but you're running a home lab with three top Tom mini computers and an Intel Nook. Ah, okay, so this is not an Intel Nook. This is a different one. The Nook and QNAP NAS I'm trying to phase out, reducing power usage. Oh, you're really having trouble with power usage with this? 
small home lab. Efficiency is king, I would say. But yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how much power do you consume with that home lab. Total 10 watt per server. That's not really much, right? I, I think you're totally fine with that power usage. And you're running a hyper-converged HA Proxmox cluster with Seth, man, I definitely need to take a look at Proxmox clustering. I think this is what so many people are doing right now. And I haven't really tried it yet myself, but I think I need to. Also really cool home lab. But also I would say like, I don't know what you can do about the cable management here. I don't know, maybe reorganize it a bit. But anyway, great stuff, man. So I think this is also a decent home lab with Proxmox clustering. Okay, next one. This is from Prey for Tree. So, um... Okay, so let's first take a look at the pictures and now we are getting to the bigger home labs, right? I mean, this is amazing. Such a big server rack with a lot of networking equipment here at the top. I definitely see this is Ubiquiti. You always recognize them by this uh, blue square here at the left side of the devices. This is definitely Ubiquiti. I don't know what it actually is. Is it a router or a switch? I think this is something like a dream machine or, or something like that. And this below is probably the switch. And you also got a TP-Link switch over here, I suppose. I'm, I'm curious to see what this is about. And yeah, you got some really nice cable management. I suppose these are all like five different servers. Absolutely insane, man. And a storage system below that. I think that looks like Super Micro, maybe. But this is really nice. You got some really great job with cable management here. You definitely see the cables are coming from the back of the server rack here and going up to the top here to these patch panels somehow and then it's connected from the patch panel to the switch. I think you did a pretty good job here. And you got a static server rack, so I absolutely love this. Also got a static server rack. And yeah, so this is dashboard. I think that's this uh, homepage application. I, um, I really wanted to take a look at this myself, but honestly, I'm not really that much uh, invested into home server dashboards currently. I don't know why, but I really don't use it much. Uh, but that's really great. So we get a, a, a better idea of what kind of workloads you're running here. Like this media automation stuff, I have no idea about. I'm not into running media cell uh, servers myself in a home lab. But you got some I think you got some decent monitoring stuff here, Uptime Kuma, and I'm, I'm not sure about this application here. But the networking stuff, yeah, you can definitely see Unify UDM Pro. So this is the uni uh, Dream Machine stuff. And you're running Proxmox, just like e everyone here in this community, I suppose, and Truna Scale. Great stuff, I love that. Nginx Proxy Manager. You probably have seen my video about Nginx Proxy Manager. I'm not really a big fan of this project anymore, but anyway, I know a lot of people are using it for simplicity and yeah, it's it's uh, still an, an easy solution. Wazoo, so I haven't really taken a look at this application. I think this is about EDR stuff. Uh, so for people who are not familiar with uh, security, so yeah, security information and event management. I don't know if you would really need something like that in a home lab, but hey, if you have a heart for security, that's probably what you might want to run. And of course, you got Docker, Portana. That's absolutely amazing. Plex Media Server. Again, I'm not a big fan of media running media servers myself, but anyway. Bit1 Password Manager. So you're running a lot of interesting workloads here. And oh my god, so this looks nice. So I, I was about to ask so what this small unit is uh, underneath the first server here. And yeah, you got a display, you got a keyboard. I, I want to know what that costs. Because I, I've seen some of uh, these devices on Amazon. They usually are very pricey. But I wanted to get one of this myself. Because I, what I really hate is when I need a keyboard and a monitor, I always need to plug them in, uh, in my server rack. This is just horrible. And I would love to have one of these units here that you can just just pull out of the server rack and then you have a monitor and a keyboard automatically attached to all of these machines. This is so useful, I suppose. And yeah, TrueNest scale machine, wow, 125 gigabytes of VCC memory. As I said, absolutely insane. But yeah, if you're running like a storage pool for the Proxmox server, so if you're, for example, starting these virtual machines uh, or you have the virtual machine disks on that shared storage, maybe as a SAN solution, something like that. I think you need that much memory for running virtual disks or running like fast storage. You, you definitely want to have that cache. So it totally makes sense for me. And yeah, this is also a nice picture of the front here. As I said, very clean setup. I like this a lot. And that's from the side. Yeah, great job with the cable management. I was about to ask so how that looks like at the back, but it looks like... It's clean here as well. And yeah, you can find some uh, nice facts about this, uh, like UDM Pro networking, security cams inside and outside of the house, 
wow, really crazy, but you need something like this. And a 16 port uh, PoE switch, I suppose, for the cameras and stuff where you want to power them over the network and maybe another 24 port gigabyte switch for things that don't need PoE. Really nice. Patchbox Plus. Oh, that's why you got that great cable management. 48 port blank keystone. Really nice. Um, I'm not sure about this here, I have no idea, but I think this is the KVM console for this uh, unit for the, the monitor and keyboard. Any super micro 36 bay chassis for true scale. Absolutely incredible, man. 12, 10 terabyte, 12, 14 terabyte. Man, this is insane. That's not an SMB business anymore, man. So this looks like a data center, right? <laughs> Absolutely insane. And you've got five servers, all with i7 CPUs. Some of them even got a uh, graphic unit for transcoding or from, ah, you said like old gaming rigs. I think this is the best, how you can make the best use of older hardware, just transform your old computer into a new home server. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a great way to start a home lab. Uh, instead of just buying a big and beefy server, even when it looks like that much professional, you can see these are all desktop CPUs inside. So really great solution and a great way to not throw your old computers away or just get rid of them. No, you can transform them into a server and yeah, you can build, you can build uh, such an impressive big home lab with that. Absolutely great job, man. I, I absolutely love this. And next, the home lab from Aquarium 30. Here's my home lab. Nothing special about mine. Hey, every home lab is special because it's unique, right? So don't underestimate your stuff. It's great, man. Let's have a look at the pictures. And yeah, you can see some beefy stuff again. Again, I see these keystones here a lot in networking equipment. Um, I haven't really looked at this myself. I usually like to wire them myself and not use these keystones, but I think like this is very practical if you're changing a lot of things in your cable management, I suppose. And also this is Ubiquiti, probably a dream machine. That's a Ubiquiti switch. I think like a lot of people based in the US are using Ubiquiti. I don't know how popular it is here in Germany. I don't really see many Ubiquiti setups in Germany. So we usually tend to use other systems. But I know there's a, a great and big community in the US based uh, regions around Ubiquiti. I see them a lot and I would love to get my hands on some of these systems because they seem really great, but haven't had the chance to look at this myself. There's also another network switch. I'm not sure what this is about because you probably could also connect these two cables here to that machine. So I don't know. I suppose that's an HP server. I, this is, I think this is how their new servers look like. And what is that here? That looks empty, but man, is that a Blade server? I mean, okay, so let's take a look at the next picture. Oh my God, yeah, <laughs> it absolutely is, right? I mean, I haven't seen these systems in professional IT. I mean, these are like the computing cassettes that you put in this, um, this chassis here, and you can add like up to probably eight different servers in this big Blade server system. I know that these systems are very expensive. I haven't had a single customer using them. So as you can see, th this is not a small to medium size <laughs> business architecture. This is a data center architecture, right? But very interesting, uh, very curious to see you even got those many machines. What are you using them for? Really interesting. And yeah, you got an APC. I, I'm, to be honest, I, I need to make a confession. I absolutely hate APCs. I'm always a bit afraid of getting an electrical shock if I'm working with these. I, I needed to do that once at my main, uh, at my earliest job in IT and I absolutely hated it. I know it's, it's really strange because you usually operate with these on a day-to-day -day basis in a professional IT, but I'm always afraid of getting shocked when I see these. <laughs> I don't know, but it absolutely makes sense. I, I know. So yeah, let's have a look at the specs. So as I said, uh, Ubiquiti setup, that's great. We talked about that. Cisco switch only for VMs and containers. So, ah, okay. So that's why you separate it then. Can't you do VLANs in Ubiquiti or something like that? A shell for the Hue bridge and ONT. I don't know what that is, but the Hue bridge. Okay. That's for smart home stuff. And the main server is an HPE DL3080, but it two months ago. Uh, as new from local HP partner. Wow, crazy. I, I, what did that cost? So I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of, of running these professional equipments in my home lab because they're usually very pricey, especially if you got the newest hardware generation. But in a home lab, I usually tend to use old desktop CPUs or like used um, gaming PCs or mini PCs because they usually have a much better 
like power efficiency value than these big professional servers. But again, I know they have a lot of computing power. You have a lot of um, warranty, on-site warranty and all of these cool things. If, if you need that, if you're running some production workloads in your home lab, maybe I think that could make a lot of sense. You also got a back, backup server, HP 18 LTO SAS. HPC 7000. Honestly, I, I don't know what this is about. I have no idea about HP servers. I'm, I'm out of this. I really don't. I really just know the ProLine series. So that's what I used to work with in my first job. But any of these numbers, I, I have no idea. But that looks like a tape drive for backups. Ah, okay. So ah, this is this one here. I forgot to mention this. This is a tape backup drive. So this is what you also use in professionality. And oh yeah, this you can really easily overlook this, but that is the NAS system. So the, the SAN, right? And then you got 16 of these Blade servers. Yeah, it was right. This is a Blade server. I haven't really seen this in real life myself, but that looks absolutely crazy. So please tell me, why the hell do you need all of this? And what are you doing with it? I want to buy two Xeon and 256 or 512 gigabyte memory for each blade. But before that, I need to sell. What the hell are you doing, man? So this absolutely looks insane. This looks like a huge data center setup. Not really like a home lab to be anymore. Absolutely insane. I mean, I love this professional equipment, but usually you don't have a chance to work with any of these systems in your home lab because this is more like a data center setup than a home lab. Absolutely insane. This is beyond my, my skills and knowledge, to be honest. But it looks very clean. It looks very impressive. And I think you did a great job with combining the professional equipments that you would typically use in such a uh, data center setup. So you've done a good job here. And yeah, so that's it. These are some of the most impressive and interesting setups that I could find on my Discord. So again, if you have more pictures, descriptions of your home labs, please let me know, submit it to our Discord. I would love to make a second video like this and react to more setups. And maybe we talk about some other interesting topics or maybe we could make a second video that is probably not that much hardware focused, but maybe more software focused, something like this. Yeah, I, I just need to take some time thinking about what we could do here in this recurring community video format yeah whatever i will let you know so please don't forget to like and subscribe join the discord let's have a chat about some future videos and projects and thanks everybody for watching i will catch you in the next video take care bye bye